I'm Tom and this is my sixth video for the Printabot Simple Metal Kit. In the last video we took a look at how to assemble the extruder and the hot end and in this video we're going to finish up the Y axis and attach it to the rest of the printer. So first up I'll remove one of the grub screws from the remaining pulley and we can set the pulley aside for later. And for the rest of the assembly the orientation of all the parts is going to be crucial so please try and stick as closely as possible to what I show you here. The first part we're going to install is the black Delrin Z-nut, like this, and the two nylon spacers. These three parts are going to be sandwiched between the motor and the aluminum plate, and we're going to use the 22mm M3 screws to screw everything together. The best way to go about mounting these is to push the screws through the holes in the aluminum plate, and then use those as a guide for the two spacers and the Z-nut. You can then screw that whole assembly onto the motor. And as usual, thread the screws in lightly at first and then tighten all of them down together. Otherwise aligning all four screws is going to be pretty tedious. Also keep in mind that these screws aren't reaching into the motor that far so be a bit careful when tightening them down. Now is a good time to check the alignment of the Z-nut again. Next up we'll install the idle bearings for the belt. For this we'll use an M4 screw, a bearing and two washers and install that whole assembly right next to the motor shaft. And another one just like it on the opposite side. Next we'll install the pulley onto the motor shaft and at this point it's a good idea to align the flat side of the motor upwards. Apply some Loctite to the grub screw on the pulley and then align it so the belt has no chance of rubbing against the aluminum base plate. Then tighten down the grub screw onto the flat side of the motor. Next up we'll install the end stop for the Y axis, watch the orientation of the lever and then install the end stop with the two remaining M2 screws. We're also going to tuck away the cable of the end stop and route it away from the bore in the Z-nut. We're simply going to attach this to the motor wires. Try and attach it in a way that neither of the wires are under tension. Next we will install this whole assembly onto the bearing box. And as you might notice each of the blocks is marked with dimple. And I'm going to orient these dimples away from each other to make the y-axis a bit stiffer. Insert the remaining 8mm rods to align the blocks together. And then use 8mm M3 screws to attach the aluminum plate to the bearing box. Again, only lightly thread these into the holes at first and once you're sure that everything is properly aligned, you can tighten them all down together. You'll want to check that the rods are still running smoothly after you have tightened everything down. <laughs> Next we'll install the end blocks for the rails. Now each of these can only be oriented in one specific way. So we're going to start out with the block that has the two small holes, install it on the opposite side of the end stop and orient the thicker part away from the motor. You might need to slightly convince these into place with a hammer. On the opposite side, the thicker part is also oriented away from the motor and the center bore is aligned with the two holes on the other end. To install the belt, we're going to start out on the side that has the single hole and on that side we're going to thread a 10mm M3 screw into the bottom of the block, then zip tie the belt into a loop and just like on the x-axis, try not to smash the belt and get the zip tie as tight as possible. Then insert the zip tie into the center hole and lock it into place with the 10mm M3 screw. When tightening this screw down, try to not over tighten it as you're not actually holding anything down. This is only holding in the belt sideways. Next we're going to thread the belt 
around the pulley and of course the teeth of the belt should engage with the pulley if they don't you install the belt backwards in the previous step on the other side we're going to use the remaining belt clip and we're going to thread the belt through the clip and then attach the clip to the end block with two 20 millimeter M3 screws. Don't thread these in too far yet because we're still going to tension the belt and zip tie it into place. Try to get this belt as tight as possible at this point and then use the zip tie again without smashing the belt and as tightly as possible to lock the belt in place. You can then tighten the belt and as on the x-axis try to get any slack out of the belt. Next up we're going to attach this whole assembly onto the Y arm. Again the alignment is key here. Align the tip part of the aluminum plate away from the extruder and the Y end stop towards the extruder motor. We're going to use six 10 millimeter M3 screws to connect these two parts and the alignment of the holes in the aluminum plate and in the delrin blocks might be a little off so push the bearing blocks into place one by one and install one screw after another try to avoid cross threading them and when tightening all of these down keep in mind that you're threading into plastic again so try not to over tighten them When the assembly for this axis is complete, we can install it onto the rest of the printer. To do this, you can simply pop this whole axis on top of the Z-rails and thread the lead screw into the Delrin Z-nut. And while it's totally possible to install this upside down, the printer is only going to work if you point the hot end towards the print bed. Hmm. So that was the assembly of the Y-axis. In the next step we're going to clean up all the wiring and then we can go ahead and test out the printer for the first time.